Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, everyone. Welcome and happy Kwanzaa. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Power. Sister Power's VIP guest today is Anne Yoshida, born, raised in Hawaii. She has always had a love of outdoor activities, especially water sports. Since February 2000, after an accident left her paralyzed, Anne has been competitive in various sports. However, she specializes in water sports, such as adaptive surfing and spring kayak. Join us as we discuss Life is Being Extraordinary. <laughs> Welcome, Anne. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thank you for having me here oh, today, I'm Sharon. so glad you're here. <laughs> very, very happy that you are here. And I'm just moving our Kwanzaa uh, information over. And we have finally made it. We're here. <laughs> yeah. And we have to give a shout out to our friend, yeah. Ann Howland, for putting us together. And this is so exciting for me, the water sports. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Wait, Aloha, Marianne. Oh, oh that's right. You. Aloha, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, like you said, you know, I, I grew up here. Um, <clears throat> but what's exciting now is that I'm really, uh, I moved back home about a year ago and, um, you know, starting a career and setting up roots now. So I'm feeling pretty excited about the things that I'm doing. Um, in the sporting world, but also in my career as an occupational therapist. Well, and today was a special day. I mean, you look like <laughs> you just you just came off the runway. But tell <laughs> us about the exciting news from today, this morning. Oh yeah, um, I just competed in the Haleiwa International Open. Um, it's out there for people sponsored by Hurley and Volcom, um, and I got to compete. Um, in an access, an access surf or adaptive surfing um, heats, and I won. So, that was congratulations, nice. congratulations! Thank you. The well, waves were big. Is what? The waves were big. The waves were big. How big? Uh, like four to six. Four, forty-six. Four to six feet. Oh, four to six yeah. feet. All right. Okay. Thank That's you. That's like overhead for me. You yeah. Sure. Well, and uh, you competed in. Para canoe at the Rio Paralympics. I did. Becoming the first female native Hawaiian. What is Paralymp Paralympics and why are the Paralympics important? Uh, the Paralympics were actually, you know, out of the uh, 1970s where um, people with disabilities were coming out and doing sports and they wanted some recognition and um, op opportunity to compete against people across the world, just like the Olympics. So Paralympics, para meaning parallel to the Olympics. So two weeks after every Olympics, the Paralympics come in and people with all kinds of physical disabilities go out and compete in their various sports. There's summer Olympic sports and there's winter Olympic sports. So that's why I'm wearing the jacket here today. Oh, wow, a United <laughs> States Paralympics team. Yeah. And those, these are beautiful accessories. So tell me about the one on your lapel yeah. to your, um, my right. So this was yeah. from the U.S. Uh, so, um, we were in Rio, and uh, the U.S. State Department was there. They had to go with us everywhere we went in Rio uh, de Janeiro in Brazil for security reasons. So. I got to know a lot of those guys, and they came surfing with me and uh, got a little pin out there, and we, we trade pins. It's a kind of a fun little um, get to know people and then icebreaker. And then these are just, you know, Hawaii and the U.S. because I participate with them, and then the, the, the stamp for the Paralympics. Wow, wow. Well, express your feelings in being the first woman Paralympian of Native Hawaiian descent to compete in paracanoe at the Rio Paralympic Games. That was the first year the sport was included in the Games, am I correct? It was. It was. How do you prepare for this type of sport mentally, <laughs> emotionally, and physically? Yeah, it's whew, lots of preparation, years, years, and years of preparation. Um, I was preparing for the, I, I never started competing actually until. Uh, 2011 ish um, in paddling and I found out that you know I had some you know I went to world championship and ended up uh, getting the bronze 
bronze medal. Is one of the medals here? Uh, no, you okay. know, a lot of those medals that I get, this is just from this year, but a lot of the medals that I got back in the day, I um, would come home and give that to someone who supported me throughout the time because um, it was momentum for them, you know. Oh, how generous. Like you that. would give your medals to someone. Yeah. So okay. let's, let's spotlight and let's talk about some of the medals you have here. Uh, tell me about that. Well, you tell me where you want to start. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just came back from California uh, representing Hawaii um, as an adaptive surfer team uh, in the Team Hawaii as an adaptive surfer. And so this is a gold medal. I won gold medal. It's beautiful. So I'm a world champion again. Um, I defended my title. And um, Anne's style is I do beezer, buzzer beaters, uh, which is at the last minute of the, the um, heat, after a 20-minute heat. Um, I get the last wave of the heat, and I usually win the competition with that you last go, girl. wave. So, um, and I was fortunate. That's not something I want to do. I don't plan to do okay. it that way. But it's really exciting, you know. But um, yeah, so I got the world championship. I uh, defended my title and got that. And then um, our team, Hawaii, uh, we got uh, fourth in um, in the world. So we're the top fourth, the fourth in the world um, for uh, adaptive surfers team. And then um, this one is just recently, um, we have a Hawaii Adaptive Surf Championships here in Hawaii at Duke's Ocean Fest, but also at Queens here oh, at Break. Oh, sure. So we have that every year. Um, and this year we're actually, um, Access Surf is hosting, hosts it um, in July or in June. Um, and then I, this is the second, so I, I competed in the, open division, which is both male and female. Um, and I was, I think, one of two women in 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 the group and ended up getting second to one the world champion. One of two women? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many people are competing? Uh, maybe about 16 okay. in our division. Yeah. And then uh, this one was kind of fun, Dehui. It's a cop, uh, you know, a local race, but it's a paddleboard race. And uh, what's fun about this is I got third place. Usually I'm not so excited about third place, but that's in my division for all, ability, all abilities. So um, I was competing against people all my age. So it tells me either one, there's not enough people my age that are competing. Okay. <laughs> or, you know, I just got lucky. <laughs> no, you're blessed, totally blessed. And I was, we were speaking early, today is the second day of Kwanzaa, and it's about self-determination, and you're the perfect woman for this show for the mm -hmm. second day of Kwanzaa. So thank you for being here. And we, we actually have a video of you surfing, Anne, and I want the viewers from Sister Power to see that video. It's just absolutely soothing and gorg gorgeous of you surfing. And then you can tell us a little bit about it, and that should be shown soon. Okay, all right, you can talk about it afterwards. Here we are. All right, we'll, get, we'll come back to the video. What, what I wanna ask you, you are Native Hawaiian, a woman, and you have visible disability, how do you re-educate people in order to break down stigma and barriers? <laughs> uh, I think you have to, uh, when you have a marginalized uh, community, I feel that you have to kind of target it on, on all different sides, um, not only through education, but just being you, mm. you know, and getting out there and not letting, um, the labels that people put on you um, stop you from being yourself. Um, I think a lot of times, like I'm, I, I like to connect with people, and um, if I let every time someone told me no or someone told me that I have this disability, I'm different, and you know, like what's wrong with me or something, if I let any of those times tell me that I couldn't connect to people, then I wouldn't connect to anyone, you know, because I people tell me that a lot, but I think like. Um, so I think you just got to be you, but also education um, in that just understanding that there is life and an amazing life, yeah. an extraordinary life outside of being a woman or in a marginalized um, community. Or 
Well, our title, our theme uh, today, Life is Being Extraordinary, and you have a motto that you always uh, tell I people. Do. Tell us about that motto. So the motto is, uh, when I focus on being normal, I exclude the possibility of being extraordinary. Say that again. When I focus on being normal, I exclude the possibility of being extraordinary. I like that. I yeah. like that. I came across this, um, it just came in my head at maybe five years ago or six years ago when I was um, competing at the Paralympics, um, but also when I was competing in the World Championships. There is so much mental fortitude that has to, mm -hmm. um, you have to train yourself to go through um, that you need to tell yourself every day at your breaking point that you're going to get up tomorrow and do it again, you know, and break, your, break those things down. Um, so the mental and spiritual um, components of training is just as important as the physical training. But that's wonderful. Well, now we're going to take a look at that video now okay. and watch you surf the way. This is one of our divisions that is the elimination type of final. So these surfers advanced through heats to be here, and that is Ann Yoshida. We could do a full show, a couple hours long, on just her accomplishments, her road to recovery, and also her upcoming induction to the Hawaiian Waterman Hall of Fame. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful, uh, beautiful. That's at Queens, uh, right before Hurricane Harvey was about to hit or something. Um, we had the Hawaii Adaptive Tur Surf Championships, and um, that was one of the waves that I got to get. Um, in that, uh, that wave actually won the heat for, so I won that heat. But, you know, there's a couple heats before you actually win the whole competition. Wow. So, at that moment. How many is, uh, how many people are in your team that help you prepare for the championship? Um, well, we have the Hoya Adaptive Surf Team. That's about 25 people. About um, 16 people, there's 16 spots about, um, that go and represent Hawaii in the World Championships every year. Um, this year was held at La Jolla Shores, um, and we had great surf. Um, but in my personal team, you know, there's an individual mm -hmm. team too, because it is individual sport too. Um, I need one or two people uh, to help me get in and out of the water, uh, to help me get my board in and out. But once I'm in the water, don't, hands off, don't touch me. <laughs> You're ready to go. Yeah. You're ready to fly. Unless you have a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> I jump on a jet ski. So do you have a special canoe that is made just for you? Um, yeah, you know, everything's better with people. Okay. Right? So I don't ever go in the water alone. Okay. And I think that's something I had to break down when I was uh, first injured, is that I would do these things all by myself all the time, you know? Um, and so I had to, one, be okay with myself and not have to prove myself to everyone and just know that I can ask for help. And then two, it's always funner with a group of people. So I can, uh, you know, invite people to come along with me and I have just as much fun as if I were doing it alone, sometimes even more fun. Wow. So. Well, that's one. What we're going to do is take a short break. Yeah. And we're going to come back and speak more with you about surfing. Thank you. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. の日本語でお届けする。こんにちは、ハワイの日本語放送のコスト国末ゆかりです。各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています。日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲストをお
title is Life is Being Extraordinary. And what are the biggest obstacles and how do you overcome them? <laughs> the biggest obstacles like in my life now? Well, in, you know, you are, you are a competitor. Yeah. You compete in the Paralympics. Mm -hmm. So are there obstacles in preparing for it? I'm sure. <laughs> what are they? Oh, wow. Everything. Really. Everything. <laughs> I mean, what is the biggest everything, one really? Um, so I think the, the one thing I learned the most, actually, when I competed for the Paralympics was just the mental training that okay. needs to go on. Um, because uh, I think as women, we feel uh, not enough sometimes, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's sometimes I, I kind of feel a little bit not enough or less than what I should be, um, especially being in minority groups. Um, you kind of feel like you're not enough, right? But I think that that mental fortitude was so important for me to train. Like just one positive thought that I can repeat in my mind um, can change my game five seconds less. You know, my, my one minute race is, you know, now, you know, 55 seconds. Yeah, you know, women, as women, we are so hard on ourselves. And, and, but we can do, oh, if you can feel it, you can do it. Right. And that's what I say. Who are your role models? Oh my gosh, <laughs> so many, you know, Duke Hanamoku, but Ooh. Real Sun, I grew up with Real Sun, um, watching her as a woman with breast cancer um, and all of that stuff, and as a surfer, and what she did for all the keiki. Um, they, she really um, developed surfing for children, you know, and so I grew up watching that as, as a little kid. So I think, you know, she was definitely one of my role models, but really when it comes down to it, my grandmother and my mother, mm. they were both very big water, water women, and they taught me to love the ocean, and I wouldn't be where I'm at without them. Well, your family, your mm -hmm. entire family, is the one that motivated you, inspired you Absolutely. to just respect the water. Yes, uh, I grew up in the water, so... Um, my dad as a fisherman and my mom as a um, swimmer and surfer and snorkeler and all of that stuff. And I think um, just everybody, you know, being in the water is or in the ocean is part of our culture. Yeah. Um, and so I grew up respecting it, you know, and I, I grew up knowing that it can overpower me in any point in time. And I need to be humble in what I do because... The next day, it could be totally different. Totally different. Life mm -hmm. is a challenge. And we have some beautiful pictures of, of you with various activities. I, I want people to see the different looks of, of Ann Yoshida out there in the mm -hmm. water. That, that is just so beautiful. Now, tell me about that, that you're in a canoe? Yeah, yeah um, that's in a kayak, a K-1. Oh, a kayak. Oh. Yeah, and that's the sprint kayak that um, I went to the Paralympics in. I jumped off of my va'a, which is an outrigger canoe. Um, and I started doing kayaking because they put that in the Paralympics. Okay. So I started training actually kind of late, but um, yeah, that's what a K-1 looks like. And I had to learn, it's a total different strip. Even though it's a boat and it's in the water and it's a paddle, there, it's, it's a total different um, technique and a different way to be in the water. So it was a learning curve. There was a learning curve at least. School is never out. School is never out. No. What advice would you give to aspiring athletes? Oh, so I give this advice to everyone, really. You know, it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or if you're getting out of, um, into the community for the first time after being in a wheelchair or, or whatever. Um, just one step at a time. Um, whatever it is, one second at a time, one minute at a time. Uh, this past uh, competition that I was at in um, in California, I had gotten, my leg strap came off, um, and I got in swept across the beach in like 15 minutes in a 20 minute, 25 minute heat. Um, and so I was far away from the lineup, and I just said one paddle at a time, you know, one paddle at a time. I got myself back into that lineup and cut, cut perfect waves came to me, and um, I jumped on it and paddled into the waves. Um, but I think just understanding that you can trust mm. and have faith 
that what is out there is going to be enough for you, but also what what is out there is going to be what makes you your extraordinary. Mm, you know I, mean? I like that. Thanks. What's next for you? Oh, <laughs> I have a lot of big dreams, but this year I'm planning a world tour. So it's planning a world tour yeah. starting when? So I think the first time I'm going to go out is in May ish. Um, and it's 14, 10 to 14 different countries across the world. I'm going to compete and hopefully work on um, uh, surf clinics. Uh, adaptive surfing, I feel, is empowering to everyone, no matter who you are. So if you jump in the water, and you, even if it's just to get in the water and feel the dynamic um, environment of the ocean, that's enough to give you some kind of power. Um, I also feel that you know the salt water is the closest to our body composition mm. than anything else is. So we feel more at home in the in the salt water. So I think like <clears throat> being able to put on these uh, surf clinics across the world and impart my my knowledge, um, you know, sure. as an occupational therapist, but also as a competitive athlete um, in the sport. Um, so you're t you're doing a world tour starting May. So are you are you looking for sponsors? Are you doing any type of fundraising? Yeah. So I haven't. This will be my debut. All right. <laughs> I haven't really like told anyone yet. But oh, yes. oh well. The world knows now. <laughs> yeah, the world knows now. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm fund I'm fundraising for that world tour. Um, I'm not sponsored or anything like that, so I'm looking for sponsors too. Okay. Um, but I would love to go across the world um, and share that knowledge that I have um, in adaptive surfing um, to a lot of everyone. Uh, really, it's really to empower women in sport and to promote inclusion in competition. So Anne Yoshida is planning a world tour Yes. And so everyone who's listening out there, our audiences across the world, contact Ann Yoshida. Give us your email address. What information can they contact you? So you could just contact me, lifeaccessed, A-C-C-E-S-S-E-D, -S -S um, at gmail.com, or lifeaccessed.com um, is my website. All right, the website is up. So the, check out the website and contact you. and. This is going to happen. So how, how many days? Well, it's going to happen no matter what. <laughs> well, absolutely, of course. Um, the world so tour will take place. It's 14 different countries. Okay. Um, every different country has a different competition that takes, you know, three to five days. Um, and then one day, or one day before or after, we usually put on, like, some kind of thing for the community to do a sport cl uh, clinic, a surf clinic. Oh, that sounds yeah. exciting, going to the various countries. Have you partnered with any sports brand as representative? Uh, nope. <laughs> we need to work on that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You should definitely be uh, a representative, one of the uh, major sports brands. So who would, what brand would be um, the perfect brand for you right now, especially with May coming up as a world tour? Well... I actually like smaller brands sure. for some reason. Um, OEV, I wear their rash guards all the time. Even though they're a paddling company, they actually are perfect fit for me. And so I wear their stuff. Um, and a bigger company would be like Patagonia or um, Athleta. I wear those clothes too. Okay, they've, they've heard it. They, they, they hear you. <laughs> yeah. so I'm sure that's coming. Where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, gosh. Um, well, next year I see myself embracing this world tour. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and that's going to be annual. I'm sure that's going to be an annual years. event. Yeah. Ooh. So I don't really look that far ahead. Okay. I used to back in the day. Yeah. You know, I used to have like five-year plan and 10-year plan, and it never really, like, happened, you know? Um, I think it's not that it... You know, it was just better, you know, like what happened was better. So I just, every year I try to live better. So I don't know how I can top this past year, but I'm hopefully next year uh, it'll be good. It will. It will. Just your enthusiasm and your determination yeah. 
yes. to achieve. You know, you're inspiring all of us and all of the viewers. I, I really admire you. I kind of feel, though, like, like everything that's come into my life has been, it came into my life. You know, I had the faith to jump on those, you know, like opportunities, right? So the opportunities came into my life. A lot of people don't see those opportunities. They don't even see them as opportunities. They see them as fear, um, you know, indicators or something like this. But um, I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's an opportunity. I'm going to jump on that. And, you know, I don't have kids or anything like that. So there's not a lot of um, things holding me back. And I have a great support system. So um, I could jump on those opportunities. And it really has been an amazing ride. Uh, okay, <laughs> amazing ride for you. It has. Free fall. <laughs> what is the craziest question you've ever been asked? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? No, no, this this is probably one, question. one of them. Yeah, nobody asked me what's the craziest question. Wow. I mean, like, people ask me all kinds of things. You know, I have, like, these set little monologues in my head, you know, when someone asks questions. Um, a lot of times people, you know, come, and come up to talk to me for the first time because they see my dog. Oh, um, she's Ani. just, oh, I wish <laughs> the audience could see her. She's darling. Yeah, and before her, you know, I had Echo. Um, and I didn't actually move away from home until I got um, Echo, my service dog. So um, he gave me that strength to be able to jump out and move move away from home and then um, move in abroad, actually, and teach in Korea. Ah, you yeah. moved abroad to Korea for I how did. long? Um, for four years, I taught in occupational therapy, which is why I have a doctorate in occupational therapy. And we, <laughs> time is all goes out over. <laughs> I want you to and look into the camera and in one minute just inspire the people about what you're doing. That p give them the courage to do what you're doing, especially people who love the sports who live here in Hawaii. Oh, so there's so many people that actually, you know, go out in, in the water and ocean. But I think the one thing that I could say for everyone is just don't wait till tomorrow. Do it today. Um, like, get one step closer to where you want to be. Um, it doesn't matter where it is as long as you get that one step closer. Um, so it took me a long time, you know, to um, get out of bed. You know, when I first got injured, you know, sure. it's really hard for me to even like get up out of bed, and so. That, I don't think about that anymore. It becomes my normal, you know, or the way I drive, it becomes my normal. The way I take my wheelchair out of the car, you know, 20 times a day, it becomes my normal. I don't even think about those things anymore. The way I put my beach wheelchair, um, you know, out of my truck, and then I ask and summon for help um, at some random <laughs> tourist guy, and I say, can you help me in the water? I don't even think about those things anymore um, because it's so normal in my life. Um, but it becomes that routine. And so just one step at a time, get out closer to where you were than yesterday, and um, you'll get there. Oh, well, thank you so much, Anne, for joining Sister Power and motivating us and educating us and inspiring us. And I want to thank our audience and happy Kwanzaa, happy New Year, and everyone be kind to one another. Aloha.